falls within inverted commas that they registered. Okay? Worst case, they say, forget it, I don't play in your field anymore, I don't sell to you. So it's disastrous for us. But um, how, how, what is the, what is custom doing, or what is the government doing about it to, to encourage the foreign players to register? I'll say something and I'll pass it in you. Yeah. Oh, actually, for him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, I think, uh, firstly, we have to accept that it's not going to be easy. It's, it's a challenge. I mean, as you mentioned earlier, in Australia, they are also already finding challenges to this. So, um, it's very much um, uh, the, the onus is on the supplier, the foreign supplier, to comply. Okay. So, we know currently the rule is if you, if you have supplies of digital services of more than 500,000 a year, then uh, you are required under the, the law to, to, to register. Now, if you're a big uh, multinational group, then of course your reputation is, is at stake and you would always want to comply with the law. You, you, know, you can't actually have the risk of your name being out there that you, have, you are operating illegally. So I think the first thing is the country must make it very clear that if you uh, do not register and when you're supposed to and you operate and you sell to local uh, consumers then that will be doing business illegally uh, and the big boys will not be doing business illegally so now then it will be the smaller uh, operators which uh, may not comply uh, I think the other avenue is to go through the banking system you know and, and that one of course uh, there are a lot of ways I mean you guys are the IT guys um, to basically track and, and actually eventually reach the service providers who are charging to the lo local consumers because usually it's through the credit card system. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. uh, I think my fellow panelists are correct about that. The important thing to note here is that the level playing field. So there is a need for the government to be seen to be doing something to ensure that the local players are not subject to attacks which foreign players are not subject to. Now, in terms of enforcing this, other countries have tried it. It's a very difficult thing to enforce. If a foreign service provider decides not to impose this service tax, if they do not have a presence here locally, how do you take my step? You can talk about MCMC probably blocking their, their, their website and their services, etc., and all that. But I don't think the government wants to go down a path where it seems to be censoring websites and all that. Now, if you look at Bank Nagara itself, Bank Nagara has a lot of data on a lot of these payments we make, credit card transactions, uh, bank transfers, etc., and all that. Now, Bank Nagara is able to track this payment. Sorry, for those uh, foreign delegates, uh, Bank Nagara means the Reserve Bank of Malaysia. Yeah, our central yeah. bank. Central bank. Yeah. They're able to track these payments. Right? Now, a lot of these payments, credit card payments, are done using PayPal systems, etc., and all that. Now, as a matter of last resort, and I say last resort because it's a very expensive solution, Bank Nagara can actually set up a payment gateway, forcing all credit cards and other payments to go to the payment gateway and act as the collecting agent. Yeah, they can do that, but it's a very expensive proposition to develop the payment gateway, etc., and all that. So then the question becomes is that, is the benefits there? Sorry, uh, let me just interrupt you. They could easily just go up three or four or five of the Malaysian uh, payment gateway and say, look, you, you do on our behalf. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that is the other possibility as well, kind of thing. Yeah. But the question then becomes is that what happens to the payments which go through other gateways? Kind of thing? Yeah. So most of it would actually channel through Bank Nagara. So if you say you're going to get the banks to do it, yeah? PayPal may not be subject to the banks. Kind of thing, yeah? Yeah. So Bank Nagara will probably be the one which can actually funnel everything through, through a single gateway if needed to be. So it's not solved the problem yet? Yeah. No, I don't think it's solved the yeah. problem yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, please, please. Uh, it's just interrupting. Yeah. 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 I just want to add on one point because Wynn's emphasis on the business impact and stuff and the playing field, right? I think, you know, we need to stress enough so that the business understand and then probably the government. The, there's a, to, to me personally, there's a big flaw in our service tax that what they did say that the tax you pay, unlike GSE, you cannot pay back. Which means that any tax you pay become a cost to you, the Malaysian firm, right? So if you are a Malaysian business who does this type of thing, you would pay service tax on your restaurant bills, your auditor's bill, taxation bill, lawyer bill, all, and this become your tax. And of course, then your cost of doing business
business is, is higher than perhaps anybody in the country when they are GSC because those things are all creditable. Yeah. Right? So internally, is it level? Not really, because a foreign guy don't pay your service tax. Yeah. And when you go outside, yeah. your services is embedded with all this um, non debtable consumption tax. Um, you remember the, the credit thing, right? During the GST era, to some of you, that when you actually got incurred on the tax, you can claim it back and all that. But this is with the SSC, it's perfectly fine. I'm going to ask one more question on the local aspect, then I'm going to move on to the global and regional impact, which I think will be a bit more interesting. Yeah, uh, I want to direct the question to Indio and Sue in terms of comparison of a Malaysian uh, uh, tax as compared to. Um, uh, other countries in the region, uh, we are charging 6%. And one pertinent question I always have in mind is, why is it the same as the SSC? It hasn't the SSC, is it has it always been in line with the SSC or they can differ? So the first question is, what are other countries charging? Okay, the other countries, most of them has GST already or VAT equivalent. So what they, the rates they use is the same as the GST or VAT rate uh, because it's creditable like what David mentioned. So just to give you all a flavor, Australia is 10%, uh, South Korea 10%, our down south neighbor 7%, I think you heard that Singapore wants to increase the rate uh, in the next few years. Then uh, India 18%, and uh, Taiwan 5%, so different countries have different rates. Uh, Thailand, I know they don't have digital service tax yet, they haven't uh, announced a digital service tax yet. What is this? The GST? Uh, the GST? VAT 7%. 7%, right? Yes. Thank you. 7% for the VAT. Yeah, the GST, VAT, they call it VAT in Thailand. Yeah, and then your question was why Malaysia wants to use it, put 6% same as SST, the service tax rate. Again, I think the intention of the government is to make it a level playing field again with the domestic tax rates for 6%. If they put it higher, then uh, the overseas foreign uh, providers will complain why is it not the same as the local one. Or you put lower, then the local providers also will complain. But in essence, that going forward, these two rates will be hand in hand the same. Is that fair, fair assumption? Yeah. Uh, with, with passion, you wouldn't ask, why must follow SST? Yeah. With equal passion, I ask, I, I answer, as I'm getting older, keep things simple. Why so, life is so complicated, you know how many rates you want. Fair enough. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Okay, okay. So 6% for Malaysia is not too bad comparative to other countries, like even the 17 or 70%. May I? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I risk complete content of this here. It is good for the consumer in Malaysia because when you buy foreign, you pay 6%. If you are Thai consumer, you pay 7 yeah, or yeah. somewhere pay more. But remember, if you're a business, then in Thai, you don't have the cost of VAT. Whereas ours, the six the cost. It's very important there's a difference there, right? You understand, huh? I don't. That's <laughs> <laughs> joking, that's joking. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's move on to the what we call I call it the the, 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 the more regional aspect of things like, you know. Uh, because while while Malaysia, yes, we are, you know, but I think whatever happened uh, tax on or other uh, what we call uh, regulations in Malaysia, it that there is impact. You know, uh, so let me just ask. Uh, okay, you swap. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay, the question is okay. Based on I just had a discussion with you all just now. The question is not about whether there is enough tax or not enough tax. The question is where the tax is collected, and the perception now is all the tax is collected in US, in all the big companies because all the IP are there. So so. So, so my question you is, you know, is, is that a fair, what was the word, uh, uh, fair view to say that actually all these big boys are actually impact paying tax, but it's only where the tax are collected to me. Uh, just give me a bit of a, a view, you know, based on the regional perspective. I think you've got to go back to the fundamentals of taxation, right? Now, uh, internationally, taxes are collected at the national level. So Thailand collects its own taxes, Malaysia, Indonesia, etc. The problem arises is when there is cross-border trade, when the Thai company has a business in Malaysia and all that. Now, in order to to, be, to, be, to, be, uh, to summarize it, in order for uh, the Malaysians to collect tax from a Thai company, 
of a tie is to collect tax from a Malaysian company. That company must have a presence in the other country. Right? So if it doesn't have a presence, then the rules change and it can be difficult to collect tax on them. Right? Especially when it comes to business income. Right? So, in a digital economy, right, that has become a big issue. Because when you have digital trade, you do not need a physical presence. 